In Mark chapter 1 and verse 17, Jesus spoke these words to his first followers. He said, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. See, Jesus invites us to come as we are and follow him. But we should never mistake that as an invitation to stay the way we are. He could not be clearer that when he first invites us to follow him, he tells us that his intention is to change us. Now, this is the very first of a series of monthly videos that we are producing where we're going to explore how God works in us, how he works in our hearts to bring about this change that he wants. And just to be clear, the change that he wants to bring about in us, it's not external. It's not superficial. It's not behavioral. He's after our hearts. He's after heart level, soul deep, inside out change that touches and marks every area of our lives, including our character, our commitments, our priorities. Now, the truth is, this is good news for you and for me, because I believe that the desire for change lies deep in every human heart. We want to change. That's why we do things like buy self-help books. It's why we go to therapy, join 12-step groups, um, go to the gym and work out. It's why some of us are watching this video right now. There's just something in us. We want to change. We want to become a different person, maybe a little better person than we are right now. A more loving, a more joyful, a more peaceful, a more patient person. And see, this kind of heart level change is at the very core of what the Christian life is about. Listen to the Apostle Paul writing to a church in the first century in the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter. Paul says, oh, my dear children, I feel as though I'm going through labor pains for you again. He's so passionate about these people. He says, and they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives or fully formed in your lives. Paul wanted to see these men and women their lives change. And when he talks about Christ being formed or developed in us, I think he has something real in mind. He understands that we are all formed by many forces you know, in our lives. Our family of origin, our friends, our education, our society around us, our vocational experiences, the media, and on and on. But see, the message of the gospel is that it is possible for ordinary people like you and me to be reformed, to be transformed, to receive supernatural power, to lead extraordinary lives, lives that are characterized by the love of Jesus. Now, for too many Christ followers, when we hear about life change and we think about how life change happens, we often default to depending on two things, neither of which are very effective. The first thing we look to to change is willpower. You know, we hear a sermon uh, or we read something that inspires us and we say to ourselves, we may not say it to anybody else, but we say to ourselves, I need to try harder just to be better. And so I'm going to will myself. I'm going to grit my teeth and I'm going to become more loving, more joyful, more peaceful, more patient. Have you ever tried that? It doesn't really work. And the second thing we look to is information. I think sometimes churches act as though the main vehicle for transformation in people's lives is more information about the Bible. If we can just get people to learn a lot more details about the Bible, then their lives will be transformed. But unfortunately, that doesn't really work either. Willpower does not transform. Information does not transform. Something more is needed. Something that we cannot do on our own. See, in the scriptures, uh, over and over again, we are taught that God has a part to play in our transformation, a huge part to play, but that we also have a part to play. Many places we could find that. But I want to take you to this one in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Paul says to work hard to show the results of your salvation. Notice, not work for your salvation, but work to show the results of it. And then he tells us how, by obeying God with deep reverence and fear. 
And then he says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. See, Paul says that we are totally dependent on God. God has to give us the desire and power to change, but we're totally responsible at the same time. We have to work hard to show the results of our salvation. It's what St. Augustine said years ago, that without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. Now, just to illustrate this transformational journey, I, I want you to imagine this as being like crossing a sea. And there's two boats that you can get into. One of them is a rowboat. You know, you get into that rowboat, and it's all up to you if you're going to make it or not. You have to row with all of your might. It's completely uh, on your, completely on your own. It's up to your abilities, uh, your efforts, your righteousness. That's tough sledding. But then consider a sailboat. Now, if you've ever sailed, it's not as easy as it looks. There's work involved. You get onto a sailboat, and even though you cannot control the most important thing, which is the wind, there's still work to do. You have to learn to read the wind, how and when to hoist and orient the sails. You have to steer the, with the rudder. But with all of that, you're still completely dependent on the wind. If the wind doesn't blow, then the sailboat will not go, no matter how hard you may try. If it reaches the other side, it will be because the power of the wind carried it there, not because your willpower or your know-how. You see, the transformational journey, it's a little bit like that. We may pursue it, but we can't orchestrate it. We can't control it. But that does not mean that it's passive or random or haphazard. God's part is he provides the power to us to transform our hearts and lives. Our part is, is we must open ourselves up to him in ways that allow us to recognize and respond to his power. To what Jesus said is respond to the winds of the Holy Spirit. And so practically, what does that look like? How do we open ourselves up to God? Well, that's really what this whole series of heart videos is going to be like. But just by way of an overview, we do that by intentionally engaging in practices, experiences, and relationships that ground us in a lifestyle of openness to God. A life where we stay continuously connected with and dependent on Him. That's how we go about it. You see, it is, it is through these practices, experiences, and relationships that we learn to kind of put up the sails, as it were. These are ways that we make ourselves available to him. Now, I want to take just a couple of minutes that I have left, just very briefly, and I just want to walk through with you these three uh, categories to help you just begin to understand a little bit of how God uses these. And then again, in subsequent months, these are the topics that we'll be digging a little more deeply into. But the, the first category uh, that we need to engage in is spiritual practices. And, and by spiritual practices, I'd simply mean habits. Habits like reading and studying the Bible, prayer, solitude, silence, uh, service to other people. These practices, they train and kind of tune our hearts to live with a posture of awareness to God. These practices do not cause God to act. He doesn't love us more if we do them. But what they do is they make sure that we're alert when God does act. Experiences. I think of experiences as events or activities that we may or may not choose that God uses in our lives. Because God wastes nothing in our lives. It might be a missions trip. It might be, a, um, it might be some type of service opportunity. Pain and suffering that we go through. Some type of relational breakdown. God uses those kinds of experiences to shape us. And then lastly, this idea of relationships, and this is really simple to understand. Transformation is a team sport. If I want my heart to be changed, to be like Jesus, I must know others and be known, love and be loved, serve and be served, celebrate and be celebrated. I think that's why in the New Testament that phrase, one another, appears so often. So these wisely chosen practices, 
experiences and relationships. Think of these as just tangible ways that we raise our sails and open our lives up to cooperate with the transforming presence and the power of God in our lives. They are so important um, if, if we want God to change us. And so... What's going to happen now is each month we're going to look at it, provide a new video that is going to take a hands-on look at a different practice, experience, or relationship. Over upcoming months, we're going to talk about things like meditating on the Bible, how to pray, a prayer for kind of normal people. Uh, we're going to talk about spiritual friendship and why we each should have spiritual friends. We'll talk about silence and solitude and how we practice them and many other things. Next month in our, the video that we're going to kick this off with on spiritual practices is we're going to look at reading God's Word reading the Bible, how to do it impactfully. There's nothing that could be more basic or more important. And so come back next month and join me, and I'm going to walk with you through a very simple and time-tested approach to reading your Bible that will make your personal time in the Scriptures much more enriching and impactful for your life. I hope to see you next month.